What's going on, everybody? We are standing yeah. in the lawn of one of the biggest and most expensive single family residences on the yeah. planet. Big, I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids, that's wealth years and years. We're touring this home with Mike from Centurion LV. He spent the past seven years working on this house, and you are not going to believe some of the tech features that he put into this place. No, no holds barred, there's no excuses. There's not a feature you would want in a home that is not in this home. Anyways, that's enough of me. Let's go check out the house. The developer in Isle has done many other homes. And um, you know, he said it a long time ago. He said, you know, every home that I've built, there's been something that the house didn't have. And the buyers say, oh, only if it had a 35 car garage, then I would buy it. Right. Only if it had four lane bowling alley instead of two, I would buy it. <laughs> and so of all of those projects he did, he finally, the point of this house was, screw it. We're gonna put everything that anyone's ever asked for so nobody can come in and say, only if it had this. Right. And that's really how this thing turned into the monster that it is, is because it is the, you know, no holds barred, there's no excuses, there's not a feature you would want in a home that is not in this home. And so to continue to try to get all of that into this space, even though it seems like, well, you have this much space to work with, no problem, but it's a challenge. And to get those features that uh, a buyer is gonna want, I mean, this is unique, a spec home, you don't know who's gonna, what they're gonna want, who's gonna come in here. Um, and so to have the vision to make sure that you have everything that anyone could ever ask for was really the goal. Master wing is so far from our main uh, AV head end. Um, we had to put a remote rack up here that runs basically this upper level. So wow. it's got all the network gear and then the amplifiers to run the audio. So it's one of the few remote racks we have. Most of the racks are in the main rack room, which we'll show you. Yep, I mean, just looking down on this room, for the, just for the scale of this room, those light fixtures, the dining area, this is just massive and, I mean, it's just so over the top, but in, go, in a good way. It really, it all starts to flow and make sense when you spend more time here. I love all the natural light too, that's even pouring into the room from the roof yeah, here. Yeah, really sky lights. actually a lot of natural light. I mean, the, these lights aren't doing a whole lot. At night they do and they're fine, yeah. but the oh, yeah. natural light that comes in is, is really remarkable. To light a room of this size versus to light a hallway, you've got yeah. two very different. Yeah, when you're washing a wall that's 25 feet, you have to have a lot more power. So there's a lot of engineering involved in that early on in the design phase to make sure we have the right fixtures in the right places. Yeah. Three more bedrooms and the access to the uh, upper deck. And we have all the keypads like at the bed and the bed oh, wall so you nice. can control the lights from. Okay. I think a lot of times people try to do too many things with the lighting keypads and it gets confusing. We just want it to be simple. Yeah. Um, big buttons that are backlit and you just can hit them and turn on the lights. Yeah. The attention to detail in all these spaces is just. And you can't really, the bad thing is, is like, you just keep saying that, right? I'm, I yeah. do too. And yeah. until you see it, you don't really even get that. Really walking into any one of these bedrooms, you're seeing what you would see if you were walking into the master bedroom of a multi-million dollar home. Yeah. So it's, I, I love what you said downstairs. And that is that there was kind of no expense spared in terms of outfitting every room properly. It still is outfitted like a master bedroom. There's views. I mean, the views from this room, <laughs> are just as good as the views from the other master. Yeah. I mean, it's, it just blows my mind. And the home is huge, but I'm, I was surprised to see that when I walked through the doors, it felt like a home. You know, a lot of people have referenced this house to feel more like a commercial space just looking at the spec sheet, but it does feel and flow like a home. It just happens to have a lot of amazing amenities kind of tucked into every pocket and corner, so. At this scale, um, we have to use some commercial enterprise level products and, and systems. Um, and that can make it very cold feeling. And uh, so that was one of the, the main goals was to make it still a home. Um, for instance, in a commercial property, you usually have a professional IT guy that runs everything, right? Yeah. Um, but here, you're just in your home. And if you wanna play music, you need to be able to walk up and push a button and play music. You right. can't have the IT guy do it. Right. Um, and so we had to blend kind of consumer residential level things with a back end of kind of enterprise level commercial um, level things and blend that together. And that's, that's part of one of our specialties and that we've been doing for a long time with these mega homes is how to blend that um, you know, personality and the residential system with the hardcore systems that go into commercial properties. So from up here, you can you you really get the sense for the fact that you are at one of the highest elevations in Bel Air. Oh yeah, 360 degree view up here, nothing in the way. Yeah. 
do you have a favorite room in the house? I'm, I'm not much of a favorites guy. Anyway, it's like, what's your favorite ice cream? I love all ice cream, obviously. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, every space is so unique. I, obviously, the outdoor spaces, the views really are kind of the money shot, you know. But, um, you know, we really, as a team, created some remarkable spaces. As you got to walk through quickly today, there's a lot of just jaw dropping, oh my gosh. Right. Um, spaces and so um, I love them all obviously the theater because I'm an AV theater guy that's a great space um, but really um, you know I'd say probably this patio um, with the Eleusis video wall and those great speakers outdoor with yeah. the view if I had to really be parked one place that'd probably be it yeah okay so this is something unlike I've never seen before let's talk about this yeah this is TV a wall. Uh, digital video wall Eleusis digital canvas um, we can play art on it or TV or whatever. Um, and we've got it flanked with some JBL uh, wow. CBT speakers, which these speakers are actually pretty unique. They're, they're constant beam technology without getting too deep into the technology. It makes the sound pressure level the same here as it does all the way out in the, in the lawn. Wow. So as you walk away from the speaker, it's the same loudness. So you don't have to blow away the people sitting here in order to get good sound out there. So those wow. are very unique speakers that were specialized um, just for this kind of application. And then with this big video wall, it's a 1.5 millimeter pitch. These things click together like little tiles, building blocks. We can make them any size. Um, this really is, is a huge, cool, powerful installation with all sorts of great art. We're streaming um, Black Dove art content. Black Dove is an app that you can um, get a subscription to and make your own art playlist. There's tens of thousands of art pieces. Um, most of them are uh, 3D and animated and really cool and interesting that you can just get lost into. Um, and then there's also some great static ones. Uh, it's pretty It's pretty great with the new um, uh, content coming out with the NFTs and the crypto art and people want to display digital art and really change the room. I mean, with what you put on this, this screen, you can really change this space. Oh yeah, and this definitely does that. It's weird for me standing next to it because for one, it's huge. I'm sure that picks up on camera and for two, like I found myself looking up here more than once for the projector. Right. Like this, this screen is so massive that you would think that it's projected, but it's not. And so the technology is super fascinating to me that you can put a high resolution image, what, probably 1080p. Yeah, yeah this is higher than that just because of the size. But um, yeah, we have different resolutions. But this is a direct uh, view LED. So you're looking at the LED that's producing the image opposed to even like your regular LCD TV, um, you're not looking at what's creating the image, it's behind another piece of glass. And the fact that this is outside, just in the covered patio, we haven't even been to the movie theater yet, I can't imagine what that's going to look like. This is so awesome. So how about expense wise? Is there one room in this house that stands out as the most expensive room from a tech standpoint? I mean, the theater is, is generally the most concentration of technology and cost. Um, and that, that's with any home, usually. Yeah. Um, and that's the case here. I think the main AV room that runs everything um, is definitely uh, pretty far off the charts. And there's a lot of concentration of, uh, of uh, itty bitty lights that are expensive in there. Yeah. Um, the nightclub has a lot of stuff, but I would say probably the single room would be the theater. It's a world class um, uh, beyond anything that you would get in a commercial theater. Um, at, at the scale that we had to achieve, that size of room, um, was was huge. And you can see it just continues on all the way around. Right, it wraps around the screen. Yeah, so that's a very heavy duty commercial drapery system. Um, and one of the unique things about this is actually it was a design challenge was where do you put all of this fabric when you close it? So the stack up is much larger than the space that we have here. Right. So the curtains actually curve and go around behind the screen. How do you watch a movie in a theater like this? So just like the rest of the house, um, there's uh, Apple TVs, there's a Kaleidoscape uh, video server system in here. We do have a 4K laser projector with world-class video processing to make that Apple TV look the best it can look. Um, but uh, yeah, you just the same way you use any other room. Come in here on your Savant system, hit Apple TV, turn it on, and bam, you're up and going. Awesome. Oh, so this sorry. is acoustically transparent. See how there's all these holes? Yeah. Um, so the speakers are behind, just like in a commercial theater, then come through. It's a Stewart film screen, screen, which is the best of the best. Um, so you've got speakers back there. You've got another probably 20 or 30 speakers up here and in the walls. 
So this is, place is just blasting you from every direction when you're watching a yeah, movie. It's a complete um, commercial 3D Atmos system. So it's a, it's a, it has a complete surround sound, top, bottom, sides. There's subwoofers all down here, subwoofers all on the back and the wall. Um, there's also the same CBT technology that I was telling about out on the back, that patio with the Elusis video wall um, that makes it to where it's the same sound pressure level or sound loudness, um, whether you're close to the speaker or far away same technology in the walls. So we can calibrate and make sure that the person on the side is getting the same exact levels of audio as the person in the center. A lot of processing power and but having the right speakers as a toolbox there to get that uh, result is, is, is critical in this size room. On our way out, one more question about the soundproofing because if you're watching an action movie on full blast, I'm sure that could get to the other wings of the yeah. house, or is this 100% soundproof? No, it's, it's completely isolated. Um, you know, we try to isolate the theaters, not only from the sound in the theater getting out, but you also don't want to be in this critical point in a movie and hear a toilet flush upstairs. Right, right. Right. So it's important to actually mitigate the sound from the house and also make sure that if I want to come down here and have it crazy loud, no one's pissed off about it. Yep. You do that. Yeah. <laughs> So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the developer, Niall Niami. Did you work much with Niall directly? Yeah, yeah, we worked real close with Niall for years. Um, we did not only this home, but um, all the other homes that he's been working on um, for years and years, and uh, his personal homes as well. So yeah, we've worked very closely with him. It, clearly he's a visionary. How was it to work with Niall? I mean, he's, he's a challenge. Um, you know, he's, he's an interesting guy, very uh, direct can be kind of abrasive sometimes, um, but he's very opinionated in a good way, right? He knows what he wants. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting as a team, all of us working with him on a professional level, as well as on a personal level, supporting his systems in his homes. Um, so we get all aspects of it. But uh, um, Niall is a, a unique individual, which obviously it takes to take on something like this, even to conceive it and to think that you could pull it off is a, a unique type of personality. And I think that, um, you know, for me, that's one of the things that I feel like I've done well in my career, and that's why I've focused on these higher end homes, um, is that you end up with these really unique personalities and very, um, you know, type A, controlling, very smart, very motivated people. And it takes a, it takes a little different approach um, to deal with them. And I think that we were pretty successful with that with Niall. Yeah. So here we're at the entrance to the nightclub. If you were a guest, you would come through this gate, right? Yeah, for a party in the nightclub, you can um, get valet down there coming through this gate. This has full access control, so even if it's not a major event and somebody comes up there, we can let them in, buzz them in. Um, and then they come into here, go into the entrance, and there's a security and coat check is the entrance to the nightclub. So the idea is to be able to have an event without letting people come up into the resident side of the property. That makes sense. One of the biggest pivot doors I think that I've ever seen, and it's in glass. I'm sure it weighs a couple thousand pounds. <laughs> and here's the nightclub, main part of the nightclub, the dance floor. Um, again, it's not completely done, right? There's still some s systems we have to finish putting in. The, the club speakers and the lighting are going in actually next week. Um, we've already got some of the speakers. Um, but this is the main dance floor, bar, um, video. That's the DJ booth over there. Um, the equipment with the doors that open up to the city um, as well as this entertainment space out here. Um, this is all uh, JBL Pro nightclub stuff. This is like what you would get if you went to Excess in, in Las Vegas or um, this is the top level, um, crazy, crazy level of system. So if you're the homeowner and you want to activate this nightclub and actually throw a party, obviously you'll need your bartender and your DJ, but like, how do you turn all this stuff on and get it going? Is it so there's, Pretty much. There's, yeah, there's two sides. There's kind of the um, DJ booth side where people can get in and do more custom stuff, but we've also integrated with Savant where it's the same as turning on any other room. So I can okay. come in here and just play my own Spotify and just have a private little party without oh. anybody, bam. So we, same thing with the images on the video walls. We can just play whatever is distributed. The whole house has distributed video and audio. We can play any audio source anywhere and we can play any video source anywhere or everywhere. So, right. so if I want to have one Apple TV playing on every display in the house, I can, um, or have any music playing. And it's all done by the user. Very simple, intuitive Apple type interface by Savant. Awesome. So speaking of the TV wall, so the technology here, is this pretty similar to what we looked at outside? Uh, identical, yeah. This was made large format wide. So we can actually have two separate um, 
video displays if you wanted to have two games going or we have a video matrix and we can display up to 20 different images at the same time or we can have art up there or anything so absolute flexibility with what we can put on this display and uh, make it just cool um, art or actually have it be the main event it, it's incredible this is another one of those things where you, you look for a projector because you think that's the only way you can project an image like that yeah but every one of those little blocks creates this beautiful screen which makes sense i mean this is I don't go to nightclubs, but I'd imagine this is as good as any nightclub out there. Yeah, I would say actually there's, yes, this is as good if not better than some of the nightclubs. This is, uh, this is legit stuff. Yeah, and then down back here, obviously, this is just your kind of your kitchen area, your bar. You've got, what, a half a dozen refrigerators to keep all your beverages cool, a nice place to display all your, your alcohol yeah. on the backside. I think you could fit a couple thousand people in here if you really wanted to, I mean, especially with the outdoor space. So. So from here, we're looking at what? These are just rafters that will hold the, the speakers. Yeah, when so those there's are... um, uh, lighting, Martin lighting up there, as well as the club speakers, as well as um, fog machines. We have um, fog machines that fall, and then actually built into that box down there, um, there's a chilled fog machine that cool. makes the fog cold so it stays on the ground. So you can fill up the fog on the ground as well. So we have, this is complete legit nightclub oh, um, yeah. system here. So it's not all in yet. We're still working on finishing it up, but it's gonna be quite impressive when it's done. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. I'm sure the neighbors will love them too whenever yeah. they're hosting parties yeah, up here. So it looks like over here by the DJ booth, this is where some of your equipment is, so we should probably go check yeah, that out. Yeah, cool. The DJ booth and the system that runs the nightclub, um, this is for the, the nerds out there that know what they're looking at, they're right now just, their jaws dropped. Yeah. Um, complete um, sound webs, BSS, all crown, serious power, the complete fiber backbone, um, all of the power conditioning, tourist power. Um, this is, those, those units on the bottom just filter the power so the electronics can actually operate perfectly with no noise. Um, those alone are, I think, $15,000. I mean, serious piece of equipment. I think this, these two racks represent probably 200 grand um, worth of equipment. Wow. Crazy that, crazy price track tag, but not crazy when you turn around and you look at this room and you see what it needs to power. I yeah, mean, yeah, you've got a thousand people in here and you've got to crank it up, you've got to have the power behind it. Oh, yeah. And we have the absolute best. I mean, this is the best of the best. This is the dream team of audio gear for any nightclub. Wow. And it all starts here, I would imagine. So to power, you can't just have good speakers out there. You have to have good power behind those speakers to yeah, make it work, Good power right? and complete um, just, uh, the uh, video processing and audio processing. So we can go through and calibrate all the audio. Um, to get it to be the sound that we want and deal with all the delays and, and calibrate it to where everywhere you go in here sounds great. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and we can also play from all the house systems. So you can play, if you were listening to Spotify in the master bedroom, you can come down here just on your savant and play that same thing that you were listening to in here. So we've blended the kind of pro audio world with the residential world um, right. seamlessly. So I know that your company works on some super high caliber homes all over the West Coast and probably otherwise. Were you intimidated at all though when you had this developer call you up and say, I want to build the biggest house in the world with basically every tech amenity imaginable? Or was it just... Well, it was kind of the opposite. I called him up oh, and okay. said, I need to be doing this house. Okay. Um, you know, this is kind of what we do. And he was like, who the hell are you? <laughs> um, and it took quite some time to kind of um, convince Niall that we had the experience and could pull this off. Um, we did another project for him, Opus, um, to kind of prove um, our abilities and then he let us get full into this. Um, so it was uh, more of us coming to him. Um, you know, we were, we were, were focused on doing this high-end, high large-scale home. That's kind of our expertise. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't easy um, to get the project and get that comfort level. It took uh, months and months and months um, for him to get comfortable um, with our ability. Wow. So we're standing in the AV room. This is basically what, the brains of the house? This is it, this is the Mac Daddy head in. So what are we looking at here? I mean, this is way beyond anything that I could ever comprehend. Um, basically, this is all of the theater 
over here. These are all the distributed audio amps and then power management. This is the complete network and the fiber bone. These are all fiber cables. This is the um, Savant uh, Mac Pro computer that runs everything. These are not cheap, uh, <laughs> very powerful. And then all of the surveillance, the sources, you know, just everything that runs the whole house. This is the, the main center brain. Everything is power conditioned. Um, all of the air, this is, has its own air handling system with filtering. Um, the air comes in, cold air comes in the bottom, goes up through the top of the racks and exhaust it out. Um, we have complete, a uh, whole nother zone of speakers and video in here. So this is another room. So we can play all the sources in here um, and control everything. So every single device has power management so we can remotely reset it or schedule reset it. Like your cable box that shuts down every month. We right. can just go and actually put a maintenance schedule and reset it at 3 a.m. You know, every Wednesday, third Wednesday or whatever. Um, so we can do all this maintenance stuff. So wow. the idea is, is that we built this to not have to have an IT guy come on site. So we can remotely manage every aspect of the system. Um, even though probably in a house this size, they might have somebody full time around that understands it. Um, we can completely manage it remotely. That's one of the big things that we do. We don't ever want to have to go to a homeowner's house. Um, it's really important for us that if there is a problem or some adjustment that needs to be made, we can do it remotely. Yeah. So there's a lot of technology in to make this really easy to manage from anywhere in the world. Yeah, and I mean, to be the homeowner and to know that if you have an issue, you don't have to worry about calling a tech and then sticking around between the hours of one and five right. on a Thursday, you guys can just kind of plug in remotely yeah. and fix the problem remotely. That is yeah. really nice. It's true 24 seven service. And yeah. we have backup systems to be able to switch to. There's a ridiculous amount of backup, backup to make sure that yeah. the system's never down. Um, you know, everything uh, that we put in here is all enterprise level. Um, the networks, Access Networks is one of the best network companies. They did everything here um, for the network system. And then obviously all of the Lexicon and Crown amplifiers, it's all the best of the best. So this, this system won't have to be touched for eight years. Um, yes. It's that advanced and that solid. Obviously they get software updates, but this hardware is world-class and has a long shelf life. Awesome. And let's close this out with a million dollar question that probably has a multi-million dollar answer. How much did a tech package cost on a house like this? Man, I actually don't know the total number because it was broken up into so many things. I probably should. I would say that, uh, you know, all of the technology, which to keep in mind, the technology that we offer is not just audio video, just the lighting system. The lighting system alone in this house is millions of dollars. So um, the numbers get pretty high just because you're dealing with um, so many systems. Um, but I would say we're definitely in the eight to $10 million in tech or low voltage, which encompasses everything that kind of does stuff. Um, but that includes uh, shades, power shades, um, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, cameras, we have cameras all over the property. Um, the best cameras, we have an original on system that's, that's uh, pretty impressive, um, very smart. Um, and there's, so there's a lot of the network itself. I bet you the network in here, um, just to deal with having your phone be on Wi-Fi everywhere in the house stable um, is hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. Right, because what we're used to if we're living in more modest 2,500 square foot homes is that you've got one router that's maybe in the corner of the room and that's power in the whole house and you've got internet no matter where you are. That's, I imagine, not the case here at all in a house of this no, size. No, we have, I think there's over 30 access points, all enterprise level, um, all over the house and then how they integrate together. It's all fiber network. So all the audio and video distribution is sent over fiber everywhere throughout the house. Um, at distances like this, you can't just run a Cat 5. Heck, you pull out a 500 foot spool of Cat 5, that's not even gonna get you across the house. Yeah. And uh, the signal won't work, so we have to do all fiber. So just the fiber backbone is um, ridiculous. And we wanted to make sure that the, the network in this house would uh, survive time and, and be um, uh, usable 10 years from now, 12 years from now. So when we build a house like this, it has to have the bones um, to last many, many years. So we go at the very highest level we can now so it can last, because you don't want to redo a house like this very often. Right.
sure there's an army of people that you would like to kind of give credit to or thank for their help on this project. Anyone you want to rattle off? Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of people, although like with most projects, there's usually just a couple key people that really you couldn't have done without. Um, you know, Brian, our main installer, that guy is amazing. And I couldn't have done it, done it without him. He knows every inch of this place. Um, he's been remarkable during the whole process. Um, Connor, um, he's done all of the design, the programming. He's been in it since day one and all the design meetings. Um, the amount of effort he put into this is, is amazing. Couldn't have done it without him. And the guys, Igor, Oleg, all these guys that have been here. And we've had a lot of guys work. I think at one point we had 40 people um, on site pulling wires and working on this project. So we have the ability to flex, to be in a small company to a huge company um, and get it done. So a lot of guys that really did all the work, I just kind of wave my arms and say stuff and make up crazy shit. And these guys actually do all the work and uh, it's, been, it's been great working with them and really proud of them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, huge props to everyone who touched this place because yeah. I, yeah, it's, what, what has been accomplished here is amazing. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's a wrap for today's video, guys. I hope that you had as much fun touring this property as I did. Huge shout out to Mike with Centurion LV for giving us access to this property today and answering a ton of questions and showing off all the amazing work that he did. I'm going to link to all of Mike's information down in the description below this video. So make sure to check him out if you're looking to do any high-end tech or AV work to your home because clearly he's the best in the business. And if you wanna see a little bit more content that we weren't able to fit into today's video, click the join button down below this video. You'll find that in the description as well. That'll allow you to become a member of my channel and then get access to some of my members only content. But that's all we've got for this video. So one more reminder to hit the like button down below if you could, because that would help us out a lot. And click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber because I'm posting new videos every week. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. So until next time, see ya.